All right, guys, welcome back to the fourth and final installment of how to build a website with Wix. If you didn't check out the first couple videos, the first one we cover everything you need to know about naming your business and buying a domain name. The second video is all of the features that you would want in a website to make it personable and to get clients to want to hire you. The third video, I actually designed my own website. That was an exciting experience. And this is the final video where now that you've built your website, how are you going to get clients and traffic to your site? Probably the most important part and the part that everyone just kind of overlooks. They're like, well, I already made the website. Why aren't I getting any jobs? And right. uh, your, your work is not done at this point. Maybe now it's really time to get to work. How are you going to get people to go to your website and want to hire you? Do you have any overall advice in this area? Well, we've built F-Stoppers, which started as a tiny little website that now has become what it is. And I've learned a lot about driving traffic to websites. As we mentioned in the second video, one of the most important ways to get to the top of Google is just to create a lot of content behind your website. And this is probably not the answer most photographers want because nope. we're not writers and we'd like to take pictures. But the true reality is Google ranks sites higher based on how active the website is, how dynamic it is, how many pages it has, and then of course how many keywords are in those pages. So one way people used to do this was they would just put all these keywords hidden somewhere in the back end of their website and it would just be like hidden words, like white on white. Mm -hmm. And it was like a tricky way to like try to get your website to show up. And so obviously Google figured that out and now they actually can penalize you if you do something like that. So the best way that I would suggest building your website and getting more traffic to it is just creating more content on the back end of your website. And usually that's gonna be articles, it's gonna be a lot of text with a ton of keywords, and it's gonna be photos embedded in there. You'd be shocked how many people will find your website because of photos that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if they type in, I don't know, for me, the taser photo shoot, they're gonna find those pictures. On Google, you're talking on, about going to Google and clicking the on images. On Google tab. Images, yeah. and then that leads them back to the website. Yeah. Um, if you shoot your city, maybe people start finding landscape shots of your city and they wanna to come to Charleston, for example, or Puerto Rico, and they start seeing images and they say, ah, and they find your website that way. So I think you should not underestimate the power of creating content on the back end of your website, usually in the form of a blog. Right, so you're not specifically talking about, you know, the back end hidden on your website. You're not no. even talking about your main website, but in many cases, if you can add a blog to your website, like you said, this is going to help you show up on the front page of Google for keywords that are related to your business, but also Eventually, your Google entire images. Your website will rank up higher. Right. So if you ever type in your competitors' names and wonder why are they ranked higher, typically it's just because more people are accessing their site and there's more articles being linked. Backlinks. Backlinks from other sites. And so one little hack that I learned early in my photography career as a wedding photographer is I just started writing articles, not about my photography, but I would write articles about the venues I wanted to shoot at. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would shoot one wedding at a venue, and then I would write articles as if I had shot there a ton of times, and I'd use the pictures that I took at that one wedding. And then suddenly people are now searching for that venue, they're finding mm -hmm. my website. Little funny story that still happens today is I sometimes get phone calls from people wanting to book me as the venue. Wow. Because my articles for the venue are ranked higher than the venue itself. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And they'll say, hey, I'm looking to book the rice mill. And I'm like, you realize I'm a photographer and I'm not the venue. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just think of the power there. And um, with wedding photography in general, just imagine how much research these brides are doing, how much time they are spending. If they, if they narrow their search down to 10 venues and 10 photographers and 10 hair and makeup people and 10 florists and all this, but you have articles about all of the venues that they're considering. You're now dipping into each one of those little pots. Yeah, and, and you, you traffic do an back. article about your favorite hair and makeup person that you've ever worked with, and you do an article about the best flor florist in Charleston. You will, you will not only be ranked the top for photography, because all of those links coming from these other potential websites that we'll talk about in a second are coming into your website. But all of the individual posts, when they, when they type in, you know, Charleston wanting venues, you're gonna be number one for that too. They're gonna keep seeing Patrick Hall photography. And then when a bride reads an article 
uh, for, that you've written about one of the vendors that they were considering, it just brings your value up even more because they now feel like you have the same taste as them. And if you've worked with them, then I should just get this photographer because they're friends, you know, even if you've only worked with that florist once or twice. In many cases, I, I never knew who the florist was, you know, like they would show up after I'd already been there or something. Yeah. But if you take the time to do that and network with your vendors, you can really build this incredible community in your in your local market yep. that helps you with the word of mouth advertising, which we'll talk about in a minute. But these backlinks and, and these articles are really, it's like I said earlier, it's the machine behind your website. It's the way to drive the most amount of traffic. Now, I mentioned in episode two of this series that I am recently researching dentists who have this very specific machine um, that can do these same day crowns and everything. And I've been trying to hire a dentist in Houston, a market that I am not familiar with at all. And I have found that many of these high-end dental offices have written articles about this machine and they have used titles for each paragraph with the questions and the keywords that I am typing into Google. Mm -hmm. So I'm typing in things like, how much do same day crowns cost? And boom, this dentist, whom I've already looked at his website, but I didn't find this page. Yeah. But you know, I've saved him, like he's in my top yeah, 10. Yeah, he's on top of mind. Boom, he has an article that's that exactly. But it's, you know, it goes over the prices and everything. It's it's exactly the information that I'm looking for, but then it's also a little sale at the bottom. Like, and this Houston dental office is willing to do it and it's actually going to cost less than the lab grown, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, wow, this was helpful. And he made it to the top of Google. And now he went from 10 on my list to two on my list. Yeah. Because because he, he's just got a more legitimized business. What is the saying where, you know, you have to see something so many times? Yeah, like seven times or something yeah, before you buy so it. So imagine if you're researching photography or dentistry and you see that name two or three times, you see that logo and you hear that name, maybe you're, it's Patrick Hall Weddings. Eventually, you're just going to say like, well, this guy, I, that guy, I keep coming back to his website. Yeah. Even if you weren't impressed the first time, it's moving up a little bit just because you've seen it so much and maybe you've won them over in a, in a different presentation than the initial one that they saw the first time. So next up, I think we should just talk about doing cool, unique work, getting traffic organically because people are excited to come to your website. They want to see something different. They want to see something new. Um, the person that I think has done better than anyone at this that we know personally is Mike Kelly. He's an architectural photographer. He does amazing work. And I think what put Mike Kelly on the map at the beginning was his before and after sliders. So Mike Kelly would go into these incredible homes, he would shoot a standard shot of the room, and then he would do all this wild light painting, and then he'd have these before and after shots. And he specifically had this slider, I think, that you could slide back yep. and forth. And with that alone, he reached the top of Google for architectural photographer. Mm. Like, do you know how hard it is and how much competition it is to just get to the top of Google for something so generic as that? But the thing is, he got to the top, everybody knew his name, everybody knew who he was, and everybody started copying him, right? I don't think he ever lost his number one position, but it wasn't as exciting anymore. People weren't just searching Mike Kelly for this right. because Mike Kelly had taught thousands of photographers around the world how to do this technique. And so it, it was kind of old at that point. So what Mike started doing was figuring out what he personally was interested in, and he started doing these personal projects. I think the first big one was he did this Pan Am shoot where he he went into this old airplane that had been outfitted like a 70s airplane. He hired a bunch of models. He hired like a catering crew. And he does this huge photo shoot that's incredibly expensive. He, he paid for it on his own. But then he has this wild series that he goes and pitches to all these different websites. So he gets to the top of Reddit. He's on USA Today, he's on CNN. They start doing videos about him. Yep. And all of these websites start backlinking to his website. So they do an article on him and they, when they hyperlink to his website, it's all going back to his website. I don't remember if he had a blog at that time and it was just going to his architectural website or his blog or it was going to like a subset of his website. I don't remember exactly what he was doing, but basically 
He was already the number one architectural photographer, but now he's the number one architectural photographer with more backlinks than almost any photographer and in And it his starts field. to compound to where if you are now trying to compete with that for those keywords, it's going to be very difficult to ever beat him. Right. Unless you yourself start creating these crazy personal projects that get featured on all these websites and blogs. And that's really the name of the game now. And I know for us with F-Stoppers, we featured many photographers with their personal projects. Those backlinks linking back to their websites give them a lot of traffic. And then there's all of these other sites that just like rip your articles off and just repost our F-Stoppers articles. You know, there's thousands of them. Yeah. But they're always pulling those URL links. And even though those websites aren't as valuable in the eyes of Google, you're getting dozens and dozens, hundreds and thousands of backlinks all coming back to your website. And if you've just posted wedding photos or whatever it is that you do, and, and nothing's really gone viral, and there's no reason to really share those on other platforms, you're not getting all those backlinks that somebody like Mike Kelly is is getting. Yeah, and, and Mike Kelly recently, what he's been doing are these air portrait series where, I'm not even sure if that's what it's called, but he, he did one series where he was taking aerial shots of airports from above. That's one project. That went hugely viral. But then he started taking these portraits of airports with all the airplanes that had been landing or taking off during the day, compositing them all together, creating these artistic, you know, fine art prints. He's selling prints. Once again, he's on the top of Google. He's on the top of Reddit. He's on the top of all these news agencies. And all these websites are linking back to his website continually. But there's even more snowball effect because now all these forums and Facebook and Instagram and stuff when people are asking questions and talking about things, people are just sharing Mike Kelly's work and his website. Oh yeah, Mike Kelly did this, Mike Kelly did that. And now Mike Kelly's name is getting more and more popular. So whereas just a few years ago, maybe if you typed in Mike Kelly on Google, it would be a lawyer or a football player or some other celebrity type person. Yep. Mike Kelly has now probably surpassed all of them, and he is the most famous Mike Kelly of them all. That should be your goal as well, you know, if you're a photographer or a website owner in general. If you can get your personal name as like the most popular mm -hmm. of all the names, of all the Lee Morrises, I'm the most popular. I don't think I am, but that is the ultimate goal. And going back to the idea of personal projects, another photographer that I like to follow is just on his website is John Keatley out of Seattle. He does these quirky personal projects. He has one called Uniform Series, which is just a bunch of people that he's painted, like the army men, the little toys. Okay. And, you know, there are 50 pictures of this. But he, he's done all of these photo series over the years that it's almost become a word of mouth thing, probably in his local community, where if you're from Seattle and you follow fine art or photography, you just know, let me check in and see what John Keatley's doing every couple of months because he's constantly doing the commercial work, but he's constantly doing the personal projects. And it's always something pretty interesting and unique and quirky. And if you're just chasing the commercial work and not doing these fun series, the commercial work very rarely stands out and gets you the notarization and the, the publicity that the personal work will do, you know? Yeah. And so it's really the personal work that's going to help create the interesting content on your website that gets shared by these larger platforms and keeps the word of mouth kind of going. Now, when we talk about sharing your commercial work or your personal work, whatever it might be, social media is huge now. You know, in terms of YouTube, I feel like we should all have YouTube channels at this point, just because if you're a photographer, your camera can shoot incredible 4K video, just learn how to do it. You don't have to be the most personable person on camera, but just, get a little better on camera and do something. Do some sort of behind the scenes videos or something so your clients can see how, how you work. But the much easier thing to do is just have the Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter, and just always be doing stuff. Always be liking other people's pictures and talking to them and then always be posting your own stuff. And if you're not being hired for the jobs you want, then you should be paying to do the jobs you want now. And yep. you should be putting that work out there all the time so that when people see you on Instagram or Facebook or your website, you look like the legitimate photographer you hope you will be one day. But I think so many photographers sit around and wait for these jobs to come in and they're not going to come in unless the client already sees it in your portfolio. So you're going to have to take the first step and do this work yourself.
great example of that is Eli Licardi. How many times have we worked with him now doing photographing the world? He went and traveled, didn't even know he wanted to be a landscape photographer, started taking landscape photos, and then he thought, if this could be a viable career, I need to travel to the craziest places on my own dime and get the landscape shots that I need so that eventually travel agents and you know all these agencies that are trying to promote tourism, tourism boards would hire me to then come produce images or to Instagram. It's kind of a crazy concept, but the influencer Instagram thing, we're yeah. like, we just want pictures to post on our Instagram so that people come and visit our small town because it doesn't get the notoriety that the neighboring town gets. They're hiring people to come travel and do all these. I mean, we sent Mike Kelly over to Israel to Israel to do something very similar to this. So, you know, I think you're absolutely right. You need to be paying to do your own projects that will get you the jobs that you eventually want. And if you're a wedding photographer, we've talked about this before too, you can pay to have models and people do these styled shoots is what they call it, where mm -hmm. you team up with a bunch of vendors in your area. So you have the florist, and you have the venue and everything. But one caveat here is you have to make sure that you're the only photographer taking these pictures. You don't want 10 other photographers and you all leave with the same pictures. And you also don't want everything to look too fake. You don't want the models, the people in your photos to be too beautiful to where it never looks like reality. Yeah. Or you at least have to be up front and say, this was a styled shoot, but look what I'm capable of doing. Or I wanted to do something in this whimsical way that I've never been hired to do, but I pulled it off with this styled shoot. So those sort of things can really help amplify your portfolio and create images that people are going to be wowed by that your competition is definitely not gonna have. Now, when you create a website and maybe you create a blog and you're creating this blog content, in many cases, it can be kind of depressing because you're creating all this blog, blog content and no one is reading it, right. right? You have to get past that mindset. You do have to get past that mindset or you can write for other blogs. F-Stoppers is one of them. I mean, we are always hiring more writers if you're a legitimate photographer, we would love to have you write for our website, but there are a million websites similar to F-Stoppers that are more specialized to your industry. You can write for the wedding blogs. Exactly. Mike Kelly just started his own architectural blog if you're an architectural photographer. I think that's a really good idea is you can guest spot on different blogs and then you're always gonna have that backlink. You're gonna have that picture of yourself, you know, you could do it in newspapers, online publications. That's another really clever way to get those backlinks without actually running content on your own site. And we've known uh, Blair Bunting. He's a famous commercial photographer. He has gotten contacts with big blogs and he writes for big blogs occasionally. So he might do an art article for Jalopnik or Newsweek or CNN or Huffington Post and because he's made these connections, he's reached a point in his career where they are excited for him to write for, for their blog. I don't think he's making any money, but can you imagine if you had the power to put your photo series on Huffington Post? I mean, that automatically right. skyrockets your ranking and the amount of eyeballs that are gonna be on your work. And then of course you get those backlinks and to having your had one of my series on Huffington Post, it instantly opens the floodgates to where every other site it's the news cycle. They're all like, we can't miss out on the story. Yeah. If it was good enough for Huffington Post, it's going to drive a lot of traffic to our sites. And so all of a sudden, something like that is going to open the doors to where you're going to have a lot of opportunities to share your work in ways you never thought possible. Piggybacking on what you're saying about the YouTube content is that Google owns YouTube. Yeah. And if you've noticed, they put the sponsored ads, which we'll talk about in a minute, paid advertisement, the first two or three slots, but then usually the next slots are Google Images and YouTube videos. So I don't know how you were looking up the dental procedure, but there'll be things where I'll look up like how to fix a toilet and YouTube videos are right there at the top. And something like that is a good example of, I'm just gonna watch the video because I, I need to perform those same steps. And so in many cases, the YouTube videos are as important or more important than any picture you could put on your blog. Absolutely. If you just took videos, drone footage, and like beautiful footage without you even being in it, of all the venues in your town, you could have the most beautiful virtual reality video of the venues, and then the bride sees that, and you just have a little sales pitch at the end, 
or say to see more, go to my website. I really think photographers are underestimating the power of a good, solid YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. But I think that leads into the next thing you, that you're hinting at, which is buying views. And we're not talking about buying uh, fans or whatever. We're talking about paying for ads and specifically targeting keywords to get customers to your website. Right, now when we first started buying ads, we were wedding photographers, Google was really the only place to do it. Yep. And so, you know, it was kind of competitive, but it was still early on to where a lot of people didn't know how to do that. I think some people weren't even aware that those were ads, those first couple links on the top, and then they put them down on the side. And uh, I got most of my business through Google Ads. Me too, yeah, that was, that was hugely valuable. Um, 10 years ago or so, I have no idea what the market is now, but I remember I started phasing Google out more and more because it just started getting more and more expensive and there were all these scam ads on there and everything, and then I shifted to Facebook. And what I loved about Facebook was that I could be a lot more specific. I could target only women within this age range and the biggest one of all, I could target engaged women. I did not have that much control over Google Ads. Maybe you do now. It's been a long time since I've done Google Ads. Facebook just has a lot more personal information to target those ads. Yeah, and so... Um, they, I mean, they have a status. It's like engaged. So if it turns to engaged, that's who's gonna get those ads. Exactly, and so I was paying a lot per click. You know, I might be paying up to five bucks per click, which sounds insane. If you're getting thousands of clicks, I'm paying thousands and thousands of dollars a month in um, ad money. But if for every hundred clicks I'm getting a client, that's that's a you know $500 client that's potentially spending around $5,000. That's the deal of a lifetime. I'll do that yep. all day, every day. Um, so keep that in mind. I think Instagram has ads that you could do now as well. But in many cases, you're probably going to have to spend thousands of dollars before you really start seeing a return on investment. I, I, I remember talking to some people and they'd be like, yeah, you know, Google Ads just don't work for me. And I'm like, how much are you spending? They're like $100 per month. Like, yeah. Yeah, of course not. You need to be spending like $100 a day minimum to, yeah. to get in front of the right and people. And that's, maybe we'll do a video later on that too, but there's a psychological thing where, you know, you think like I'm spending all this money and not getting any return and it's, it's not a sexy way to spend money. You can also spend $1,000 on that half page ad in the magazine, and it looks cool because you see it at every bookstore, but like, do you know if you're getting a return on that either? You know, but it's, it feels better because you see your work next to a bunch of other ads. Yeah. But there's something psychological that's hard to overcome when you're just spending money on Facebook and Google. Luckily now they have these pixel indexes where you can put like a pixel on your website and it's supposed to help track the conversions that you've actually had, real people going to your website, or real people going through your contact page, and when they hit contact and you get that email, if that pixel is red, then you can say that came from Google or that came from Facebook. Because in many cases, you still don't totally know where your clients are coming from. And I would always ask them if I had meetings, where did you find me? I don't know, I think I saw you in Charleston Magazine, but then I also saw you on Google and I found your website, but at the end of the day, it wasn't really that helpful. The other thing that you can do that a lot of people that I've met here in Puerto Rico are doing are these follow ads. And the basic idea here is that when somebody visits your website, you tell Google to follow them with ads. So I'm sure you guys have seen this before. It's like you go look at a new Jeep or whatever, and now every website you go to has Jeep ads. And you're yep. like, what the heck is going on? Well, all of these websites have Google ad integration on their websites and basically Google just knows where you personally are going. The ads are for you personally. And the basic idea here is that, like you said, in many cases you need to see the same thing seven times before you're gonna buy it. Yep. If your ads could follow a potential bride, if you're a wedding photographer, it doesn't cost very much to do it. And if the bride's not going to hire you, she's probably not going to click on the ads. So they're relatively inexpensive to do that. Just something else to consider. They even have the geotagging now. Or if you visit the venue and you have the venue marked for your geotagging and they've gone to Middleton Plantation, then they're gonna get served your photography ads just because they visited a spot that's, 
you know, a geo, you know, location. Fenced area. Yeah, so, which is pretty I've wild. I've heard a lot about this. Um, I have not personally done it. I don't think you've done it either. But if you could figure out how to do this, geotagging or geofencing ads, I mean, you could you could get really, really specific. Like, for example, any person who walks into a bridal shop, I want them to see my wedding photography website ad. I mean, that would be huge because you know if they're going to a bridal shop in Charleston, South Carolina, they're almost definitely getting married in Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. So uh, that's something else to consider, but that starts to get pretty complicated. We have not tried that yet. Yep. Now, what we've just talked about is by far the most expensive form of advertising because you're having to pay a third party, Google or Facebook, to serve these ads to potential clients. One of the most powerful forms of advertising is the least expensive, it's absolutely free, and that is just building up personal relationships with the people in your community and having good word of mouth advertising. Right. And this happens usually, I found, in two ways. It's from prior clients recommending you, and sometimes that works well. I mean, we've both shot weddings or we've gotten even, you know, kind of commercial clients through word of mouth. But perhaps the more important one is word of mouth from the other vendors in your area. I think a lot of people view vendors as competition, at least photographer to photographer they do. Yeah. But if you can go out, I know I know several, some, some people that have worked under us, they now go and wine and dine all the wedding planners and all the florists and all the videographers and like, they're in this tight social community that I don't feel like really existed 10 years ago when we were doing it hardcore. And if you can build up those relationships, that is free. And it's perhaps the most powerful one, because, especially with the venues, because that's where people go first, I find. Brides go to the venue. They want to lock that down. And then everybody else comes second. Yeah, that's a great point. And, uh, you know, just branching out into broader um, forms yeah. of photography or other businesses, I feel like a lot of people these days, they're just kind of sitting around on their phones, lonely, not much is going on. And so if this social network doesn't exist in your industry, in your city, that's perfect. You can build it. And uh, we had Josh, Josh Rossi, Rossi here. And he is uh, a famous commercial photographer. And he was talking about how he created this super elite group of kind of like celebrities in his town by sending out these really cool invites and maybe he had to pay thousands of dollars for this first party and he was buying the food and drink. I don't remember all the details. But the basic idea was is that everybody that he wished he knew and he wished he could work with, he invited them to be part of this secret group together. Had these really professional invitations made and made it you know seem very elite yep and then boom all of a sudden he is the head of this group that he created and yep. now he has every single contact he ever wanted in his city and you have uh you know incredibly powerful friends now that yep. might recommend you clients but they might also just be able to help you with other aspects of your business so i i think a lot of times photographers just get down and they think these jobs just aren't coming in. There's nothing for me to do. I'm just gonna watch TV or play video games or and whatever. Wait for, wait for the clients to Yeah, come. but there's so much that you can be doing yourself, going out, doing these photo shoots by yourself. I mean, a lot of what Josh was doing, he was finding very well-known, famous people and saying, I wanna take a photograph of you 100% for free. I will pay for everything. I'm gonna pay for the assistance. I'm gonna pay for the styling. Everything that needs to be done, I'm gonna pay for it. You can have the photo and do whatever you want with it. But now he has a connection with this person in a very high place. And when somebody asks, oh my gosh, who took that incredible photo of you? They only have one name to say. So I think we've talked about every form of advertising and traffic building that we have used and know about. Luckily, if you build a site with Wix, some of the limitations that we had, like a flash website that has no text and websites that were not SEO you know, optimized are that's a thing of the past. Right. Luckily with Wix, you're able to put tons of SEO in here and I'm looking forward to really building my site up even more and hopefully, you know, having something I'm finally proud of. Like this is me instead of just 
a page of images. Yeah, yeah, and if you guys are considering getting a website of your own, definitely consider checking out Wix. It's so much more customizable than the templates were back when I tried to make a website. And more importantly, it's so much more affordable as well. And as you saw, you could build it in a day. Yeah, you can just build it in a day. Uh, make sure that if you do sign up for Wix, you go to the link in the description below. You're gonna save some money that way. And uh, if you want more free content just like this that's photo and video related, head over to fstoppers.com. We also have full length photography tutorials that get super specialized. Some of the photographers that we've been mentioning, Mike Kelly, he has tutorials on architectural photography. So this was a lot of fun, four really useful videos I hope you guys got a lot out of, and big thanks for Wix for sponsoring this video series.